all that social media has done is it's brought out the instincts that are within us, but made them way more powerful, way more powerful. And so that tribalism we're seeing, it's inherent in human beings, but we've now got a really, really powerful tool. It's like the nuclear weapon of communication. Um, you say, I, I'm going to quibble. You say all that it's done. No, you're correct. No, it's but not all that it's done. It's not even all that it's done. It has done what you're saying. It has also armed those with resources who wish to shape our discussions. And let's be honest, we have no idea how effective they have been, right? But to the extent that somebody wishes to shape your view on a topic, they have some power tools. It's almost like they have the ability to whisper in your ear because they can appear to be an organic belief system arriving in your replies, yeah. right? And that is potent. And, you know, I, I struggle with the following problem. I'm not good at keeping track of stuff, right? I will read a paper. It's a very good paper. And then I won't be able to find it again. And there's a whole list of things that we have known at one point that I know are important, that I, I know we are losing track of the fact that they ever even happened. So, you know, just prior to, to Edward Snowden, for example, there was a, he was, I believe he was a graduate student. He may have been a postdoc at MIT who gave a talk at a tech conference in which he proved that I believe they were HP printers that could be hijacked. These were network printers. They could be hijacked by printing an infected document. And what the document would do is it would cause the printer network architecture to take on a loophole that would allow anyone to use that, if they knew it was there, to use that as a portal to get into the network. So if you had one of these on your network anywhere and you printed a bad document, then your network was compromised. There was nothing you could do about it. What's more, you couldn't even update the firmware to get rid of it, right? That printer had to go. Now, I don't know how many people even know that, right? That's an important fact. That's a huge vulnerability, but it just vanished, right? So there are all of these things. Now, I also remember that the Navy was invested in software that allowed it to manage large numbers of sock puppet accounts, right? This was in the early days of Twitter and Facebook. The Navy sock puppet accounts, social media, huh? That's awfully interesting. What effect is that having? Now, I see all kinds of discussion downstream of what Elon Musk has been saying about all of the bots on Twitter. I think I encounter a lot of sock puppets. That is to say, there's a real person there. So it's not as simple as an automated thing that can't quite pass an Eliza. I mean, it can't quite pass a Turing test. But they're not real, right? Somebody is shaping conversation, right? And people are shaping conversation about me. This is one of the things I see is that there are certain, um, if I see a particularly nasty barbed comment, right? Very frequently, almost all the time, I go to the bio, I click on it and it's like, oh, this person follows a huge number of people compared to the number, a tiny number of people follows them, right? Mostly they're, their feed is retweets of things. Sometimes they're things that I agree with, right? So it's like, it's designed to cause people to feel that this is actually somebody in our sphere who thinks I'm an idiot, right? Anyway, I don't know how big a sock puppet problem we have, but I know that the fact that I, I, I'm almost the only person who's saying sock puppet. Why is sock puppet not a, an important part of our discussion about how much we are or are not being manipulated? Right. Well, it's easier for me because it's been known for a very long time that in Russia, there are whole bot farms. People get paid to manipulate uh, Western discourse and Russian discourse, of course. And so in, in my space, that's, that's a very well known thing of which I'm, I'm aware. And there's no question that, again, that's a problem that's going to have to be solved as well. I come back to the printing press, which is we are in a disruptive period in human history. And we're going to have to have solutions to these problems. And I think uh, I'm going to focus on the ones that I think I can make an impact on. And you're going to focus on the ones that you can, you think you can make an impact on. And that's how I think we make progress. But I'm very concerned, Brett, about the fact that over the last five or six years, 
we've all become experts in our minds on things that we're not experts on. And I, I, and I do think that's a problem. Yeah. I know, I know you and I may sort of disagree about where those de de delineation uh, lines go, but I think we've got to remember all of us what we know and understand and also what we don't know and don't understand. Uh, I am, and how we, because you see, the problem is like, it's the same with the mainstream media. People say, oh, we need to rebuild trust in the mainstream. And I'm like, no, no, no. We need a, a trustworthy mainstream media and then we'll trust them again. And it's the same with medical experts. It's the same with all these things. We've got to, we have the tools of transparency now that we didn't have 20 years ago. And I believe all that's happened is we've now got a glance at how corrupt these systems have been since the beginning of time, probably. Um, They've just become more complex and therefore more corrupt in the complexity of them. I don't think human beings have become more corrupt or there's become more coercion. There's become more of that. I just think we see now what's been happening this entire time and we've got to upgrade our behavior to the level of transparency that we now enjoy. That's what I think needs to happen. I don't think people are more corrupt than they've been. I, I agree with your argument to that extent. I think we, however, have tools that amplify the yes. power of corruptors. Absolutely. So the system, I mean, it, the system isn't more corrupt than a corrupt dictatorship, right? We've seen completely corrupt sure. systems before. But the system, the West becoming a corrupt democracy simulation is a problem. I don't think it's becoming that. I think it's always been that. Always? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's ever been democratic. I don't think it was nearly this much of a fiction. I believe we are dealing, I mean, you know, we literally, is Joe Biden president? Uh, what do you mean? We have a, an apparently senile person sure. who is ostensibly the go-to guy if the radar suggests that the Russians have launched, yeah. right? Yeah. He's also apparently the guy who decides whether or not we defend Taiwan if the Chinese sure. invade and he can't keep straight what our official policy is, right. right? I don't think he's president. Do you think that if we'd had the level of insight into what happens in the heart of government that we have now, that that level of insight 40, 50, 60, 80, 100, 150 years ago, do you think we would see more corruption or less corruption? I think we would see much more effective corruption currently. Now, some of it is very subtle and it is not illegal. In other words, one of the things that corruption does is it enlarges its own capacity to wield power. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit of a hard question to answer because the nature of corruption has changed as the amount of corruption has changed. And it's, you know, it's a little bit like, um, you know, saying how much is a dollar worth today versus a hundred years ago. It's like, well, which commodity hasn't changed its utility to us such that we are able to even answer the question. Right. Right. Um, but I'm unpersuaded that, that you would see, in fact, I'm quite persuaded that you would see more corruption back then. Well, wait a second. Let's, let's take it. Let's take some place that I do know something about. Yeah. Okay. Once upon a time in science, there wasn't really any point in advancing garbagey ideas. Oh, sure. No, I'm talking about politics. Well, but politics and the academy are not disconnected. And so all I'm saying is that if we if we pressure test your idea someplace that we actually can figure out whether you're right or wrong, I'm not saying you know maybe that it's less corrupt than it was over in other areas and it's more corrupt than it was in academia. And so we could get it wrong. But in academia, what we have is a system of incentives that has changed and has, you know, caused the, you know, look, in the era of gentleman science, and I'm not arguing that that was the right way to do science, right? Democratizing science is a great thing, right? But when you had people who were financially secure doing science because they loved it, yeah. they were shooting for being right in the long term, right? They weren't shooting for getting employed in a job market where there were 10 PhDs minted for every professorship. So I, I think in academia, I can tell you, the corruption is way, way worse than it was. Um, I, I think I can also tell you that with respect to... Um, Pharma in particular, the level of corruption is jaw dropping, right? And, you know, I'm not telling you that you're in a position to know that, but I am telling you that there are people who have studied this question carefully and 
part of what I think threw us off in COVID was that none of the architecture that got booted up to persuade the government what to do was new. They were very good at it. They've been practicing for decades. Um, so anyway, I see new, more aggressive, and certainly more effective mechanisms of corruption. And I also see that the cost of corruption is that much greater because, you know, a screw up can release a virus on the world that spreads across it in weeks. Sure. But I was talking about politics. So for example, just give you one example. Do you think that 60 or 70 years ago in the United States, the links between organized crime and the people who made decisions about the direction of the country was tighter or looser than it is now? Man, I'm, I'm, I'm upset at myself because, uh, because I understand the rule you're trying to lay down for yourself, but is pharma organized crime or not? Does it count? Uh, well, not to me. What I mean by organized crime is mobsters. Why? Forget about that question. Let's just focus on, on, on the mobsters. Is the role of mobsters greater or less? Much less. Right. So my point is there have been forms of corruptions that are, that have largely gone extinct. There are other forms of corruptions, corruption that have become more pronounced because the problems of society have changed, right? The problems that society is facing have changed. And therefore, we focus on this, we have less focus on that. My point is, uh, I am unpersuaded by the argument that things on a broad scale have got massively worse. I think they're different. And I think we have much more of an insight into how bad they've always been. That's my argument. Certainly in politics. Well, I mean, I, I see something in your style of argument that I like. I think it's useful, right? Basically, you, you take somebody who has a perspective like me and you say, um, suppose I account for what you see with this much less aggressive version of the same observation can you justify any of the delta between our two positions? And I agree, it's difficult, right? And it is a good pressure test. I like it. Um, my instinct is very much uh, the nature of corruption has changed. The danger of corruption has changed. The tools that, I mean, I guess here's, here's the real- The power of anything has changed because we are more powerful as human beings. I get it. Well, no, there's one other aspect to it, which uh, I'm pretty convinced marshals in my direction here which is there is always a competition between those morality is effectively the willingness to self limit, to yeah. not take advantage of opportunities that you have yeah. for some reason, for some higher value. Yeah. Okay. If we take people who are moral, they are inherently more constrained. Okay. If we take people who are amoral, they have all the tools at their disposal, every single tool that the morally constrained have, plus whatever tools the morally constrained won't use. And so my point is, the greater the power of our tools, the greater the asymmetry between the moral folks who are self-constrained and those who will use every tool at their disposal to accomplish their objective. Uh, I'd quibble with part of that, which is it also increases the power of people who are moral. Uh, but my point is, yes, it increases them. Disproportionately. 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 